actually probably one of the most underrated uh, carries right now. We've we've seen it before this tournament. We saw the Mask of Madness Ursa picked up time and time again. It's really really strong, uh, particularly on Dire Side for obvious remaining. reasons. Now we uh we made it into the draft, Five guys. It is time for the draft. We did it, homies. We did it. We lasted the vampire. Your homies. And in a few seconds, it will be ready to show you the draft of E Home taking on Team Secret. Still a few more seconds, but we will go into the draft. There we Ooh. go. The draft. You have, you have to, you have to stretch it out. <laughs> yeah. You have to be oh. like, team secrets versus E H O M E. They're all capital that. letters. That's how you pronounce yeah. those, right? All right, no profit. So, Dream is dead for the Nature's Prophet, best hero of the world. Sorry. It's good. Good call, then. It might not be the best hero. But very high up. It can do everything. You just said it can do everything. No, no. It's not Earth Spirit. Let's we, be real. Okay, okay. we agree. Earth Spirit is the <laughs> hero. We don't count Earth Spirit do because he's, you he's know, is a non factor. E he... and yeah. He got caca. I don't think that anybody is going to oh, make the mistake of letting him through again. Another misery hero. So, are both... they trying to pick on misery and, and just take away, like, it two of the offlaners that he's performed best on? Um. Well, obviously this is targeting misery, but what I'm more interested in is that the fact that they've opened up for Puppy remaining. as much as they have. There's both yeah. Chen and Enigma. I think this might be a bait, and they want Secret to Five take, and then they're going to second remaining. pick Bounty Hunter after mm -hmm. their opener. And Lone Druid. Lone Druid is, still Lone Druid is their so top part. They want something juicy. Never mind. Here. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but Eom have to have expected this, right? The so now, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, they could pick an offlaner, and now there's three out of the pool. And then they could either go but bounty hunter, like they could also go the enchantress, one, right? right? Yeah. The enchantress faces void dual Absolutely. lane, which is quite strong versus Chen. I like this approach. Now that they didn't target puppy the way they did, I think this is a very good way of opening the draft. Is it a Chen and invoker then? Is it an invoker at all, or are they going to prioritize misery out of fear? They that have perhaps... had a tendency to lean towards invoker if the enemy team opens void done it quite a bit, but they're taking a while, so maybe Ten they want to do something else remaining. this time. Those two heroes kind of counter each other, so it's not an awful matchup. But... Yeah, I, I think it's Five mostly to deny the enemy team from getting both heroes, because that's like usually yeah, always XOR, and the combo good... is ridiculous. Are you still Weird. comfortable picking Reserve Invoker time. even in two of Faceless Void? That time dilation is pretty rough. Well, that's why Cinder was saying uh, they kind of yeah. counter each other. I the, think it's mainly just a synergy. The newer play of sure. Invoker, where you're going more close wax, is more favorable team versus Faceless Void um, than the XOR combo. Um, which was a lot more detrimental. And as Draskal said, like the extra combo with Faceless Void is actually one of the most powerful. If, if you can get some sort of global presence with a Void, it, yeah. it changes the way the hero works. I think I picked Chen to have the highest win rate this tournament for any hero with over five picks, so go secret. Because, I mean, you first have to go to five picks. Yeah, you need to get it five times. General, oh, I think this hero has really? just been looking really strong in general. Um, Especially if it's one of those heroes that Five has a chance remaining. of getting through in this exact scenario where you feel like you have to ban other heroes. You could argue Chen is, it's maybe good Reserve enough to give away Chen if you get like Earth Spirit or you get mm -hmm. uh, Invoker plus one or whatever in your phase, but you just, you can't ban everything. So, yeah. or if you get Profit, I think Profit is a very good trade for Chen too, but it's not. So good pick up here for Secret, I think. And now they're debating Invoker and maybe Venge too. Venge. I think there's one more they're considering. I can't put my finger on it right now. There's that is invoker, okay. okay. Well, I can. I think they they might have thought about an offlaner from Misery already, so he doesn't get completely removed. You know who we haven't seen much of this tournament yet, if at all, unless I've missed it, and I would love to see on Ehome is Kaka's Witch Doctor. We've seen a lot of Witch Doctor. Very good against the Chen. Great with the Faceless Void. It's yeah. a good pick. You know, I, but surprisingly, just. Not really been uh, All in the light, but, again. but e -home, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is not terribly surprising. e -home is one of like the three teams at this tournament that run um, Support Phoenix, and we're going to see a lot more of it, I think. It, the Support Phoenix is actually um, ridiculous, how much damage it's able to output, the amount of teamfight impact it has. It's uh, It actually plays so much differently than the offlane Phoenix set. Once upon a time a thing, but is most definitely not anymore. Is it just primarily only picked with Void, or are people picking it independent of that fact? Uh, it's picked up independent of that fact. Okay. It's the um, it's the Sun Ray that is really so powerful. Yeah, they uh, go like the they max Sun Ray now. One one four. Yeah. Or or sometimes uh one two two because the Fire Spirits goes from ten damage a second to thirty damage a second, so it's a really valuable valuable uh level two. It's up. an interesting 
way of trying to deal with Chen. Because what you usually look for in lineups when the enemy picks Chen is a way of dealing so much damage to the creeps that either you can force out Hand of God or you can just flat out kill them off in the fight uh, and stop the push. And Sunray being percentage based damage, um, if you get to channel a full Sunray on the Chen creeps hitting the tower, he has to pull them back. It's just too much, so. The same reason they're banning Gyro. It's not a hero E-Home have actually, I think, picked a single time this tournament. Uh, but it's just one of the carries that's really good against Chen because it has so much AoE damage. And we have seen that um, Weeha still prefers to go for a bit more of the Exor build on Invoker. Yeah, Quaswex Invoker is much stronger against Phoenix than Exor Invoker. Um, which does leave a bit of a weakness there because Phoenix is best picked up when um, the enemy team doesn't have very good disables as well. Like if you don't have any good heroes, like natural heroes like Juggernaut to be able to dress the egg, and you don't have really strong disables, Phoenix becomes all the more powerful because of that. Say earlier today, didn't we see Ehome get faceless void Phoenix, and then they did set his ban silencer. They say very good against both of yes, them. I don't know if secret with the play silencer, or if they would recognize that it could be ban. good here. It does get banned. They decide to go with the Broodmother ban instead. The second game they played against CDC today, they had a Void Phoenix and then Tusk Warlock. I think if Secret picks silencer and they put it on support, they are. I, to me, Chen, Chen Silencer is just a kind of weak yeah, support yeah. deal, right? It's, it exactly. doesn't really. They don't complement each other Five very well. Uh, so then they would have to put it on core, but seeing that they already have Invoker, and I believe Weeha is their Silencer player, and then that would put Weeha Envy onto Invoker, uh -huh. which he does play, uh, but it's a very different style if you play Invoker oh. safe lane. So I don't think it's something that Secret are going to look for in this game. What does uh, banning out the Ember and the Brute say to you? What? Uh, in terms of what Eom is going to go for for the next two picks, is it going to be more teamfight orientated? I think you ban Ember against Envy every single second phase. Yeah, every, so far. I think that's just targeted ban. Uh, and then the Brood... Kind of the same thing, right? I mean, it, Brood is just a chalk ban. It's so often seen as like third or, or even last ban sometimes, depending yeah. on if you have a, a particularly weak uh, support duo who don't have wave player or your safe laner can't deal with it. Like It's just you need to get rid of it. I also think uh, Chen Brood is actually a very good pairing. They both to push and pressure early, and Brood draws so much attention to itself in the lane that Chen gets a free jungle. So they just want to not have to deal with that. They've already moved Prophet and Tide, now removing that third off-lane harasser and having the Void themselves. They might be able to set up a dual lane safe lane that can win, giving Phoenix the room to gank mid, for example. Earlier today we saw Bounty Hunter uh, being picked for E-Home. Oh yeah, didn't ban that actually. And that is still cool indeed. It ended up winning that series too. Uh, actually, no, to be... sorry, that was CD. My bad. Wrong team. But it's still an interesting... But it's still an, an interesting I was considering phase, yeah. that the first phase that Young was in. Big adventure. Yeah. Then. This looks yeah, very solid pick. first. And yeah. The way I see it now, E-Home... Very clear what Secret want to do. They want to have solid lanes, transition into Chen getting mech, and then push towers. So either if you're E-Home, you try to split push, and uh, or just have good push yourselves that can do it. Or you try to have a good team fight that you can actually address when Secret come in. So far, so good for that strategy. Maybe they'll get more of it Ten seconds in their remaining. next pick. I think Puck isn't half bad here. Uh, I think it's overall remaining. a fairly solid choice. But they... yeah, I think it's you just facing. need to make sure you have really good follow-up damage. Sure. Yeah, Lena's good as well. <laughs> Zeus? Have... Zeus we haven't seen yet. Nope. He's really yeah, good he's against Chen. He's been banned, though. He is he's very good against Chen. One of the um, downsides... I, I like Puck in certain instances here, um, because I feel like... It's really good against any kind of saving heroes, Ventral Spirit, Dazzle. Like it, the AOE control offered is really good as well with Phoenix. But I think that in a way, Puck and Faces Void operate um, in a similar fashion. And I, I think there's almost like too much overlap of AOE disabled. It worked very well in the game CDC played earlier today against that was Secret. Game yeah, one. that was Secret. They actually crushed that game. But that was they made it look. Easy. And what they did was actually very hard. They and I would even say that against the Puffy Chris Draft was better against it because they had multiple heroes with saves, whereas now they only have the bench. They had, they had yeah. Dazzle and uh, they had something, some other hero Tusk. as well. OD, I think it was, wasn't it? And Tusk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they had a lot of saves. Well, if you want more incentive for a Puck, I think that uh, a Sven pickup actually has a lot of good synergy with a Puck. One of those carries that's being seen just a lot right now. It's really stable. It's yeah. like actually replacing the Juggernaut remaining. when it comes to popularity. wonder why they grabbed it now, if they think Secret were Five going to go for remaining. it. I mean, Maybe. it's pretty feasible, right? If you already have a Chen, you have some Reserve pretty strong time. pushing power. Sven is one of those carries that facilitates and benefits from pushing power, both because 
he offers you like war crime and everything else good physical damage but also the fact that um the pushing it opens up space for you to be able to deal with ancients and such is a foreseen secret a slaughter here viable at all i mean you got the double aura slash uh double minus armor from vengeful uh... spirit and slaughter is it I just think the hero is weak in the lane. That's the okay. problem. It's, I think Beastmaster is more likely than yeah. For Slarder, me, yeah. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, nice, Andy. Well played, also, well Synergize is nice with the auras. <laughs> what? Did you just well played yourself? Yeah, dude, you're well played, Spam. <laughs> <laughs> that just makes sense. I mean, if you yeah, think about right. it, back when uh, Void was prevalent, even before the changes, any time there's a lot of melee centric heroes in the pool, Beastmaster Team becomes it again. You know, you just get long BKB lockdown and you just try to kill the hero before he can do anything. I'm There's really so glad fun. they went back for this Enchantress. It's such a good pickup here. Yep. The the dual lane uh, faces Void Enchantress. We already talked about how good it is versus Zen. But then if you look at Team Secret lineup uh, in the 3 4 remaining. area as well, they still are lacking nuking power. Right, the Beastmaster Five is okay, but remaining. he's more focused on his like Necronomicon and everything else. The Vengeful Spirit is actually more right click uh, heavy than Jesus. most Eons other supports, right? So, the the Enchantress actually has the potential to be uh, a power pick here. There was also something that CDC were doing every game. They would pick Void, and then they would give Q Enchantress because there's even with BKB, if you get Spirit against Ench now, you just still get wrecked. Mm -hmm. like, there's nothing you can really Ten do about here it. Here comes so. the Luna ban. Drow is still in the pool. Drow is in two, actually. It's I think Seeker are going to go for one of those two and then just really try to play that game 100%. Um, if they want, they can go back for something more hard carry for Envy and look for the Spectre that they played, for example. I just don't think it's particularly good in this game. Has uh, Team Secret ever played Ursa? Ursa's oh, Ursa, no. That's another hero. That, that would have been, been such a strong pickup against Phoenix, Enchantress. Yeah. It challenges Sven. Yeah, that would have been great, too. Which heroes do you want to see for uh, for Envy now? Oh, what I want to see... I like that Drow. What do I want to see him play? Jeremy? I want to see him play Meepo. The Meepo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have that. But... <laughs> Terrorblade is a good suggestion, actually. That That's also very good. Ten I think Ench kind of destroys Terrorblade, though. Yeah, and I they think banned the, Zeus. Well, they the cleave, yeah, yeah, they banned Zeus. Yeah, yeah. the, the cleave, the AoE disable that faces Void, is pretty rough for Terrorblade. Uh, just the, the team fight combination that they have doesn't offer many Ooh, opportunities. Okay. And this is probably one of the best heroes you can have against uh, Faces Void yeah. carry wise. This is why so many teams are going to leave their carry yeah. to last pick. You want to both counter the enemy carry, but also their offlaner um, because of how uh, important the offlane position is right now. They actually have nothing to stop Morph. They can't prevent him from casting it. You can cast it even in Chrono. Mm hmm. So that's a really, really good pickup here for Secret. And actually surprised that it took so long before we saw Morphling pick. I'm saying at the end of day one, but yeah, I thought I it was kind of forgot really about him, actually. Yeah. Okay. Couch one. We already forgot about him. Couch two. I want you to uh, think about who you're going to be favoring this uh, this first game. Now that you know the draft, Couch one, you're up first. Uh, I'm going to go with Secret. You have to discuss with your team. Oh, I have to discuss with you. I was actually going to say the same thing. Okay. I, See, coming into this thing, Ehelm was favorite, but I really like the draft from Secret. I'll I, you. I enjoy the Morphling pick. Couch two. You're reading my mind right now. Tell Sheba what we're thinking. Ten seconds remaining. Whatever Cinderin says is going to be right. This is true. Secret. Secret. Okay. Well, it's like it's it's both couches are unanimous on seeing Team Secret <laughs> take this first game. <laughs> we're going to find out if that is actually true. It is time for the first a game of Secret versus Ehome with Winter and Odie Pixel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, here we go, the final series of the day here, day one of the group stage at the Shanghai Major, E-Home going up against myself, Odie Pixel, and this time, joined by the lovely Winter. Winter, I have had the delight of casting Secret already today early against CDC, this time going up against E-Home, we've seen the drafts, we're getting the Jackie Mao Morphling, is this the game for the waveform boy? Yeah, I think Morphling was a great pick here, like, even the panel mentioned. He has some sort of burst to deal with the Enchantress, very good versus Chronosphere, you can morph to Shrank and if you look at their lockdown, they don't really have very good reliable lockdown, like Chronosphere is a very long cooldown, so basically the most reliable lockdown they have is the Storm Hammer, which can be solved by getting a Lincoln Sphere, which is something generally Morphing will get. So I think Morphing can have a really really good performance in this sort of lineup. Let's see. 
The battle begins. Top rune, it looks like it's not going to be contested and well, neither of them are going to be. So Ehom are going to be able to grab themselves both of the bounties there. Wow. Secret just uh, not looking to put up a fight at either ends of the map for that one. There was such a huge blow. And Enchantress is going to, because of that, can play actually really aggressive. He, I think they are probably going to help up the Void. That's the first and foremost thing that Lamb is going to accomplish right now. And Paladai might... Is he looking to do a body block here? He doesn't have any more sentries, so he can't really block off his camp near the Ancients. I mean, Paladai is taking a fair bit of harassment here from Lanham. Lanham's he's going to chase this one down Pike. That's got a magic missile, just in case Lanham gets a little bit too hasty, but nonetheless. A, a 1v1 there between the two of them and Paladai taking the brunt of it he has to back himself off. But uh, lane-wise, do you see any any side coming out in, on top? You've obviously talked already about how the Mortling should be able to do okay. Down on the bottom lane, CTY, Wallace Fen, he has got to put up with Misery on the Beastmaster and that's going to be a little bit annoying for this melee core. Yeah, both teams have been like quite greedy. They have jungling heroes and they have supports that scale really well with levels, especially on E-Home. The Phoenix doesn't really... Uh, do really well at throwing off the offlane, so they're gonna have like both teams, the offlaners will be having a lot of levels at 11, taking a stun from Palade here, but he's gonna time walk off all the damage, but as of now he's getting a lot of experience, and we'll see when Lamb is actually gonna decide that he's gonna come in with a creep and gonna help out the lane, and he might want to wait for Ken to make his move first, because like, these two heroes, the Chan versus the Enchanters, yeah. they might, like the Enchanters probably want to go wherever the Chan goes, because you can actually stronger at the Chen at this stage because you can have uh, more creeps than the Chen. Chen can only get one creep as of now. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this uh, Chen versus Chantress does end up going on. I'm talking about matchups, the mid lane, Old Chicken on his leaner against Weeha's Invoker. 8 for 3 against 7 for 2, so fairly close between these two here and now. I mean, do you expect to see either side break away? Or uh, a certain side going to look to prioritize the gank on the mid lane first? Mm. So uh, I, I think both sides can actually get a gank off. Like if yeah. the Chen comes mid, Invoker can help with obviously with the cold snap and Enchant. It might be a little bit more difficult for the Enchanters because Lina can't. It's difficult for Lina to set up to do the cold snap and obviously still do it, but it's not as easy. I, I think it's still possible for both sides. Like the Chen and Enchanters are going to be playing a really crucial role in both of the teams' uh, success early game. Whoever makes the better moves will be able to control the early game. So. See Lamb running into the enemy's jungle right now. He's trying to look for a puppy. Oh, he has a tornado creep, so he might want to just grab the creep. And well, in the mid lane, we are just getting straight out, outplayed by old chicken. And oh, we talked about potential gank wasn't needed in the end. And top lane as well, 11 trying to go on to MV. He will be able to turn around here with the south. Pilot died with the body blocks as well off the back of a magic missile. And it looks like old Lamb could be in trouble. The summary is they're healing him. Lamb's got his back, but it doesn't matter. MV goes forward with the waveform, and they will find the kill onto the void. Bit of a mess up in the mid lane, losing that 1v1 there as Weeha goes down, but Secret able to find something in return on the top lane. Oh, top lane as well, Paladai are going to come in. They might actually get the surround onto Lamb here. And they do have the Sunstrike available in 4 seconds for this kill. And Lanham doesn't need to be very, very careful. Deep high, he's got the mana back up for that magic missile. Lanham jumping around the tree line, pings are out onto Envy, but Envy is out of mana. He's already got a lot that he can contribute to this. And but Lanham is going to be alright. Pilar died, just unable to get the wrap around and trap him, him in the jungle. Yeah. And he might actually want to consider getting a bottle here just so that he can actually keep himself in the lane. Otherwise, Void will be. Even though he died, but because they. He forced the enemy to expend so much resources, so much mana, so much HP that even though he died, he's going to be able to get a lot after that. The enemy doesn't have any potential killing him because of the lack of mana. With the Phoenix up here. Oh, oh Envy, can he get the kill? Yeah, they're looking to try to turn out 11 turn in. Can he fight Envy? Yes, he can! Gets the final touch there on some Orphling. I like die on the bench. Gonna see if we can find anything off the bat, but he needs to be careful himself. Lanham's coming in. Forced Pilar Tide to hug his tower. And damage from the Sunray. You can see why you haven't been picking this here as much as they have this storm go. And then Pilar Tide die. He's gonna get dived upon by the three of them. Verify is going to get popped, but the bench is going to go down. Envy coming in will find the kill onto the Phoenix. So something in return there for Secret. But a lot of aggression uh, being applied by e -Home yep. on the side of Secret on this top lane. You can see here Chen hasn't really accomplished much yet. He's going back to base because he doesn't have mana anymore. But Enchanter so far being uh, much more active in terms of participating in helping his team's laning attack. base. 
and Morphling despite getting 2 kills here, but he doesn't really have great great amount of CS, but he does still have 2 kills, so he went for the ring, so definitely going for the uh, Lincoln Sphere build up here. Really good this game, like I mentioned. And looking at CTY. Uh, oh. Talking about the farm, CTY. He's <laughs> top of the board, 36 last hits at the moment. Uh, I mean, this uh, Beastmaster Whoa. Misery, he's himself 18 for 4. Pretty good for, for Misery. Um, despite this man having to see some. But if you look at the middle lane, Nina is also crushing the invoker really, really badly in terms of that work. Yeah, off the back of that kill. Oh, Chicken's really gone ahead and Weeha knows he's got to be careful. There's level 6, soon to be level 7 ready. And uh, he also, of course, has this aura here. Check out He's going to be making the first move right now to help his team. As CTY, this would be the big kill if they can find it. And they've got a primal rod set it up. It's back up from e -Hope. So strike with Bruce Wilder. Look at the first down CTY. The Sunray healing and backup isn't quite enough, though. And they will lose the spend on the side of e Secret, they're going to try for more. more. Chasing down La Kaka, chasing down Lanham. They're looking for the Enchantress. Has got a couple of points in Untouchable. The three of them continue to chase. There's your Magic Missile back up. They'll get the stun out onto Lanham. The damage is going to be enough. They'll find themselves a second kill. Puppy. Been given a lot of kind of hate in the jungle there by Lanham's Enchantress, but now coming into the lane and still proving that he can find those ganks with the successful smokes and uh, two kills that are going to be very valuable to Secret at this point of the game. Oh, top lane, NVA just used his rapid get TP back to base, but he didn't really actually get full mana, so he's back. But Void, because he doesn't have full mana, Void is still oh, like carrying a lot. Misery, maybe hang around a little bit too long. CQ Void will find the Stormhammer, and this Sunray, this Kaka just comes in. Takes down the Beastmaster, Pi is coming back for him, he's got a magic missile, Pi like guy, can he get it? Bam! Yes he can, Venge with the pit. Goes with the way of Beastmaster there, thanks to the ball. They still had Sunstrike anyway, so Phoenix was a bit there, but it was still a good kill for them, a good trade of support for offlane. But right now, just look at Envy, he's, he's not having, he's not not having a good time at all, because of the fact that he was left alone by his team, and Void is extremely good at one versus one situation. Void's got a Chrono as well. I mean, Envy has got to be careful. He's still got a bit he of mana pool to play with. Get away from. So let's see. Can he actually get out of this? But he seems like he's most likely oh, going to go he's, down. Now he's more too much. So he's he's committing here for the full strength. Misery is there to back him up, and they'll just actually go straight for the Chrono here. Old Lever moving forward. The strength ball still keeping Envy alive. Purple balls of the Sapphire Torment are not enough to bring him down. And now Pylite Dye has come up to the top lane, looking to turn the aggression around, catching out Old Eleven with the roar as well. The Sun Strike. They'll be able to punish Void's aggression. But to also pick up the Satire Tormentor as well. So, nice reaction there from Secret. Keeping Envy safe, he will have to make that long walk back to the base, but not losing his life this time. Yeah, that was actually just really good play by Envy there. He, he was actually baiting the Void so hard. I thought the Void would have enough to actually get the kill, but Envy played the situation right. He still had some Magic Stick charges and baited the Void into a really bad position, so his team could actually have time to back up and then return kill there. Really good play from him. And looking at the Invoker, he sort of caught back, a little, caught back up a little bit, but he's still really far behind from the Lina. Lina, right now, he's going for the first item, Aether Lens. I think okay. we saw this one time today. Um, I can't remember from who, but we were discussing at, at the panel whether it's actually better to get Aether Lens first or the Yule Temple first. Regardless of the sequence, most of the time you would get both of the items. Yeah, I mean, do you, you feel there's any reason why this game Old Chicken Dad does decide to go for the Aether Lens first? I mean, it's still a really good farming tool and yeah. it actually helps you, you know, you have a little bit more damage in terms of uh, your whole tree spell output early and you have set up on your team from the spend and from the faces for it, so maybe he feels like he doesn't really need uh, the use set up that badly and they're gonna rotate down to the bottom. They might find Envy once more here. Well, they smoked up for this one. Uh, smoke is gonna get dispelled on the old chicken's leaner. Uh, Envy will be able to walk that one off. So it looks like they won't find anything with a smoke either. None of the rest are secret really around that bottom lane. You can see them elsewhere. Oh, let me get a bit more space here on the void on the top. Yeah, but this is, this is looking uh, really bad for the morphing because as of now, morphing is already behind. Uh, if you combine with this vent. Oh, swap on to Lina, our old chicken being dragged into the river. Nice play really from Pylai Dai. Really good play by Pylai but going back to the point where I was mentioning about the Morphling. Morphling is going to fall behind again in the next few minutes because Sven has the ability to do Ancients and he's starting to stack up. So that's going to be an, the point of the game where Morphling will fall really far behind compared to the Sven. So this is looking really worrisome for Envy because he doesn't really have the best early game right now for the Morphling. And e home going to get their team fight online, coming online with the Phoenix taking uh, a lane so that he can actually obtain his level 6. 
So even though giving up a kill on the Lina, things still looking really good for Ehome as of right now. Sven is doing really well, Lina is doing really well, and the supports are getting the levels that they need. Uh, I don't think there's anything here. Yeah, yeah we got a magic missile on Cold Chicken. Was able to bottle up that room first though. Now he's turning around and crap. But secret is there, and there again, your swap from Highlight Guy. A second swap that allows the Gilly Zero. Hamilton coming out just in time, but the Chrono is now out onto two. They're looking to take down Weed Now they're going to look for a second one. Old Lemon Kaka chasing down the Chen. They'll find the kill. Two for one there. The e home even though they do lose their mid, they're able to find Weehar in third turn and, and they get Puppy as well to boost, so yeah, they'll be happy with that one. Yeah, was really cool, crucial Owen, because right now Kaka has his level 6, so he don't feel really, really confident in terms of, uh, even though despite using the Chronosphere for that kill, but right now they have another tool in their arsenal, which is the Supernova, so they're feeling confident that they can actually push and get this tier 1 power in the middle lane, which would give them a lot of map control right now. So, e home looking really strong after that trade, and Good needs to, you know, and give space to the morphing to farm and catch up as well. Level 1 Necrobook on Misery. Still a decent timing considering his team situation. So uh, it's really good at kiting, like his ball and the Necrobook are really good at kiting in terms of later, yeah. later into the game. Uh, they have the swap as well, so they have really good tools that are limiting how much CTY can do in team fights. So even though CTY is really farm, they have a lot of uh, and the raw as well. So they have a lot of tools that slowing him down and cutting him and making sure that he doesn't deal damage. And oh, another swap on the jungle again. Pilot guys get this swap off. They'll follow it through with a raw. He's got the war cry though. CTY fairly it's tanky on really this band. I've got the ball slow, but backup's gonna come in. Lanham is there, and yeah, just the two of them alone didn't quite have enough damage. We saw we are coming in, but. A little bit too late, not quite close enough to do too much. And uh, yeah, the CTY cry. is going to be an issue. That war cry, man. That armor. Um, is definitely going to be an issue, but at the same time, like I mentioned, they do have the tools to him. They have the draw, they have the swap, they have the fall from the Beastmaster, Necrobook, so we'll see. Oh, yeah. Mid lane. They are kind of getting baited for an old chicken straight over the light strike. They'll be able to find this one. Time dilation from old level, making sure that we are not bring out any of his tricks. And we is definitely having a really really rough time <laughs> from the laning phase transitioning into the mid game he's just not catching a break right now and power finally goes down so Eon will have further control of the jungle and uh, Lamb is going to look to place a ward in enemy territory soon so he's going to have one ward here to scout out whether the invoker is jungling and hopefully with that ward they'll be able to consolidate on their advantage more by getting further kills Vlad is also completed on the Void, so there are 5 men right now with the ultimates, with the Supernova and with the Chrono is really really strong. And not to mention Enchantress, you know, Enchantress yeah. still deals a lot of damage despite not having too much items. Chronosphere, so all their heroes deal damage with the Chronosphere. You have the Sunray, you have the Impetus, you have obviously the Lina Nukes, and you know, the Sven Sun. So, Team fight wise, I think E Home are looking really good right now when they have all their ultimates up. The old 11 Desperate is really fine Tried to jump in, but it's in fact going to be Secret spawning him out there with the Horde. And they're going to move forward, they'll get the swap again. Pilot died with the control, and they've got the stun lock there with the cold snap, the magic missile. What a spell. Where's your time walk now? Where's your time walk now, son? At sad times, you know, for heroes like Void, Earthshaker, not much attack. you can do about that, you get caught and right now Secret with the big kill, they might actually transition into a Roshan here, yes they will, but they have really good heroes that are standing the Roshan, the Banish, the Beastmaster, so this is a really good move from Secret here, yeah, maximizing the advantage they can actually get from that one of the Void. So, oh, I mean without Void, we're not going to have a chance to get in there, you said, you can see that that's taken down. So Weeha gets uh, the Aegis, uh, See how much uh, progress Envy has made. Yes, 1200 gold, perseverance. I mean, fine, but right now he still has a long way to go before he truly comes online as the mountain here. I mean, as you said in the drop, when it, when he does eventually come online, yeah. it's, he is really good. It's going to be a good game for Morphin. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you can go for a bit. I think after the Lincolns. Game Acrobat is really good versus the Chronosphere, and it's very good for uh, the heroes like the special heroes like the Lina, the Enchantress. But uh, 
all the good options that he has an actual blade or even going for if he wants to go for more like farming speed he can go for the manta but those are options that he will be having in his mind to decide what he should do this game depending on the game so. But Yom hasn't really. Oh, oh yeah, they jump straight onto Weehar. They're looking for there's a wrap around from Secret. Can Secret find anything with turn? They've got the Aegis, of course, with the Invoke of the Raw. Onto Cash, and no chance for a Supernova. That's going to be the first casualty here for the side of Ehom now. Can Secret find more Light Strike? Holding back Tylite Dive. Looks like the rest of Ehom will be able to scatter. But uh, a bit of a bait there. Weehar using the Aegis to draw Ehom in, and the rest of Secret ready with a wrap around that time. So get the kill, and they'll get themselves a power here as well. Yeah, and without one of their big ultimates and Phoenix down, they can't really defend. Mm. I wonder if they try to defend when Phoenix is alive in 5 seconds, but the tower is taking huge amounts of damage if they do so much. There's the Beastmaster aura, the Bench aura. Push is real here. I mean, we saw how quickly Secret could take down Roche. They're showing the same power here against this tier 2, already about to pull Kaka. Coming in with the swoop. There's your Ray as well. And Find initiation, they get the storm out onto Weehan with the light drag as well and both is down. The stuff cards the supernova secret that get themselves out, probably leave the TP out, but it's not gonna be able to do it. The damage from CZ1 too much is a double kill, three of them now dead on the side of secret. Misery being slowed by the time dilation, he will be able to get himself out of there. Maybe sticking around a little bit too long though, Winston. Yeah, they were a little bit too confident. They they were uh, probably thinking that oh Chrono is down, but they they still have supernova, but I mean, it might be just overestimating a little bit their abilities that they still could have taken the fight. They felt they could have fought even though Supernova was still up, but they were wrong. So they overextended, they paid their lives. But um, the next thing I'm thinking about whether Weeha is also deciding to go for Necrobook with their lineup because I'm thinking they can actually hit the timing. Like, I, I don't even see Necrobook too often on this anymore nowadays. But with their lineup, the Necrobo can actually do a lot. Oh, misery. Oh, this is a lovely room for Old Chicken to have. Easy setup there for the boys. Great with the Laguna. He's a tanky man, misery. Not quite tanky enough. We'll get the Necro books out. And he will start to chip back away at them. But getting there with the Sunray. And it'll be fine. And they'll get themselves that kill. And there's times like that where like, having an Invis rune is, uh, certainly feels very lucky. Yep, uh, and with the raw down, it's, it also means that the, the other heroes have much more space and you know has, has much more room to actually farm. And he was complete less than a, a moment ago, and now he has another fifteen hundred gold. Um, I think typically the way he builds uh, his heroes, sometimes he gets a very early wound start on his juggernaut fan and even his anti mage. I'm not sure if you pay attention on how, the way he builds his carries. He does some inventive stuff. Yeah, he does very different stuff yeah. compared to other players. So I'm interested to see what route he actually goes for this game. And Phoenix is going for Midas, so he just got it. So it's a typical item for a hero that relies on levels a lot, because you want to get to that level 16 as soon as possible. And for the Enchantress, he's going for, it seems like, a pipe. Pretty interesting. Usually we see Dragonlance, we see Drum, we see Treads, anything that improves your HP so that you can actually use the untouchable and you know the nature's attendance to full effect though. I think I haven't really seen <laughs> pipe from Enchanters for a long time. That'll be interesting as yeah, that's your item pick up for CTY. We'll be going for the Blink Dagger this game. So not, not something too out of the ordinary hit for mm. the old Sven. They're pretty much the classic. Um, but I guess one thing, yeah, if, if the pipe does end up get, getting fully online for the inch, it does mean, of course, that yep. CTY can afford to go more aggressive with him. not worry too much about the get the space earlier. Oh. Ah, uh, this could be big. Uh, we oh, can't see how straight. Oh! No! Oh. That was so close. So close. Must be a down, so secret item. They actually saw that, I'm not sure. So, I wonder if they're actually gonna just make use of this time window again. One big star down. Ah, he's CTY, he wants to go for this, he's like, right, let's go, let's try and find initiation, he's actually piled over the swap by CTY, but we'll be able to get the blink after the swap, getting damage camps, get the further storm hammer, that's gonna only stun, but yeah, what's the threat here, puppy, will get caught out by the sun, though. they'll find themselves one kill, he home can they find themselves anything more, they've got the slow on to misery, or 11 time walking forward, there's your bash, now CTY coming in, with the right clicks, and we've got a pause. Right. <laughs> it, it would be envy. Not the best timing, but it's... Envy. Yes, usually, you know, having issues. My sound! Not your sound. My sound. Oh well. Oh well. But it doesn't really change Misery's fate. Misery might survive here. <laughs> Give him 
A one percent uh, chance of. I'm knowing. taking bets on that. <laughs> one percent chance, Odie. One percent. Oh, that's generous. <laughs> now the question is, who's gonna get the kill? Uh, ah, let's what we got? The projectile. He's thrown out Storm out in his CTY. Yeah, I think. I think I believe it's Griff is right here, and uh, yeah, looks like the odds. Uh, yeah, CTY. CTY for the kill. I, I think uh, we'll level. Might actually get the last here. Uh, oh no! Okay. Oh. Oh, it was Lanham. Yeah, we were both wrong. <laughs> Oh, two castings comes. Give the man that's building a team item the kill, you know, he needs to go. Oh, we should have known, because he's, he's, uh, of the build, it's just a level 1 storm hammer. It practically heals the enemy. Nonetheless, uh... I feel better than homing me though, level 1. <laughs> but secret, losing 2 there. Not the fight that they were looking for down there on the bottom lane. Uh, uh, there, was what went play? there was really good play by yeah. CTY though, he once again baited the enemy. He he keep it in front and the bench Radiant's stopped him, but he couldn't get. Attack. He couldn't. I think he probably should have mm. tried to use his alpha to disable the blink and then stop him, and then you okay. have a better chance of landing a stun on the target. But because he swapped immediately, he but yeah, he swapped, and three and blink. Bam. Yeah, he just blinked right away, and he was in a really bad position after that. So a bit of misplay from bench and really good reaction from uh, CTY. Yeah, and he's got to be a bit careful here. And that was Another pause. envy. Let me guess, is it his sound? Well... Well... Might be something else this time. It could be. For, for CTY, he's having this juicy amount of ancient stack again, you know? That's like the difference between the morphling and... Uh, yeah, the farm speed here. But when you look at how... I don't know if you actually paid attention to recent games where CTY, when he played morphling... Do he I pay attention did, to every game? He, he, he actually did the Helm of Dominator build, so he could actually jungle and do ancients. Small thing. Huh? Did, did you actually see the games actually actually did that? I, I think it was quite thing because of the fact that you are actually able to jungle early, so your support's in the lane, and you're able to do ancients with that build. With the Lincoln's build, you're basically only able to put lanes and to a certain extent jungle, but not as quick as the Helm of Dominator build. Obviously, Lincoln's is most in most games are uh, a really good item for more things. Yeah, that's the classic. But you know, it's just something interesting to know that CTY does that uh, so that he can actually jungle and give room to the support to actually take the lane. I apologize for this pause. Of course, uh, I'm not sure what it's about at the moment. MV hasn't given us any intel. Sure, I'm sure everything's going to be fun. Calm. Enjoy the, the final series of the day. It's, it's going to be good. It's been good so far. 13 to 10. Not really, it's, it's not really good for the Invoker though, this game. He's been having a really rough time he, here. We are, he's had a bit of an up and down day. He's played Invoker a few times. We've seen some absolutely amazing performances on his Invoker. It, he can, he really can shine on this he, era. He still hasn't decided what he wants to go though. He went for the Boots of Travel. Which okay. might mean that he's unsure that what route that he wants to go for. I mean, if they can hold it off, take it late, get that Morphling kind of stacked up. So Do you, you think they're going to be more comfortable than Secret? I mean, obviously with the heroes, you know, they were, they were going to want to go for that push. Can they now transition into something that's going to be decent against a late game hard hitting Sven? Um, I think they can though, because like I mentioned, they have good tools at dealing with a very farm Sven. And the Beastmaster Raw. And obviously in Boca late game, saw how scary the hero can be in a lot of games in the recent months of the Aghanims and the way you build the hero, Aghanims Octarine Call, you're really strong late game with your spells. So I could see uh, either team actually winning the game, the game goes into late game, because both sides I feel have really strong late game. Um, E-Home's team fight might still be stronger, but Secret has two to deal with, like I mentioned, the Sven, they have tools to deal with the Chronosphere as well. At the moment, the action going down in the players' room. Team secret. Minus Envy. I'm sure he's just to the right of us off the screen. Hiding there. Can assure you, he is indeed in the room, and Pile I Die is not uh, microing both of the accounts. He might be. I part of, talking about Pile I Die, he's, he's having a good game so far. Some of these swaps. I mean, he's he's been the reason why they're finding the kills. I mean, there was that one swap in the river that kind of resulted in a bad trade uh, for Secret, and that one actually down the bottom. So he's got to be careful. I, that's the thing though with the bench. But it's nice to see a bench being played very offensively. A lot of the times we see the bench being the one sitting at the back, ready to save someone. This bench from Pilar Die is very much a, I'm the one initiating, I'm the one starting the fight off. 
Yeah, it's really good that he's actually doing that a lot to help his team secure kills. And, you know, generally the hero, I understand that certain teams would be really passive with it, but can also be used very aggressively, and we see Secret doing it with a lot of success. Um, yeah, but going back to the in the Invoker yeah. item build this game, uh, I, I know I mentioned the possibility of Necrobook being really good this game, but if you are looking like, like you are looking to, you, you just mentioned if Secret are considering going just all out into the late game, yeah, then going for the yeah, Agonim, yeah, if, then going for the Agonims would be best choice if you are looking to get to the late game as soon as possible with uh, good items on Invoker. You want in, you want a mobile uh, mobility item, maybe Blink, and then with Aghanims. Pair it with Aghanims. Probably would be also a good idea for Viha, this game. Depending on what his team wants to do in the next uh, couple of... next 10 minutes especially. Whether they want to choose to fight, or they want to choose to just you know chill, farm, wait for Roshan, and just play for the late game. I mean, talking about this uh, this Enches build, uh, the, the fact mm -hmm. that obviously with the herd maybe going for for that, do you think you know Nanam is going to finish off the pipe, or are we going to see the Dragon Lance, the Agonims come out now? Is it just the hood to help himself against the Burst of Secret, uh, rather than going for the full out pipe? First mm -hmm. item. I actually think he might actually want to go for the pipe build, okay. just to just his team because it just doesn't really make sense if he doesn't complete it, All right? I understand certain heroes actually do it, like uh, maybe you're against a high magic lineup, but usually you do it on the core. I'm not sure if you do it on the support, I think you want to finish the pipe to help your team. So I, I think that that's uh, better that he completes the yeah. pipe. He's been having a good game so far, Lanham, as we can see. KDA yeah, he's five. been really, really aggressive like in yeah. terms of the laning phase. Like, the reason the Void uh, and the Lina are doing so well because he's been exerting here. Uh, on the enemy safe lane and the enemy jungle that Secret needs to expend so much resources to so tracking him down early and the first move by Secret came really late to the bottom lane that was their first smoke play after Lam had actually done so much in the in the safe lane of Secret Lam has been you know the unsung hero for this team like in the past few games as well his lion has been played really well and this in the edge And it looks like we are going to have a bit of a pause, so uh, we should be able to get uh, a recap on the last fight here, Winter. And indeed, this is the one uh, where Pilot uh, does make the swap, but mm -hmm. does result in a bad fight here for Secret. Yeah, they couldn't actually burst him uh, fast enough, and Eleven managed to come in with the Chronosphere, and this fight gave uh, Kaka his level 6 as well. So they were able to proceed to get the power after this, I believe. If not mistaken, they got the tier 1 as well. And eleven here with the cold snap, the swap into cold snap, he can't really time walk out. He's so. like, I, 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 the, the here, what was this? This was okay. This was kind of the maybe oh, intentional they, they Aegis the, bait. Yeah, they like, got the phoenix first. That was the really yeah. really big thing here. Phoenix got busted down, so that was a huge part of their team fight down the drain. So immediately after expanding the chrono, they have no way of fighting secret here. But secret push, they. All extended. But then they hung around too long because Kaka now does come in and, and yeah, they, 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 get they thought they could have taken a fight because uh, Chronosphere was down, but they were still unable to fight because the Supernova was just still really hard to deal with. And the CTY at that point just turns up and, and he's got the damage with the God Strength. And again, this is pretty much the same odd on this bottom lane. You know, Secret were trying to go for a push, hang around a little bit too long. Puppy getting caught out there by the troll trap. And uh, I believe they do find yeah, Mistress. Ah, yeah, that's when we had the. Famous my sound pause. Was his yeah, hopefully we guess what the enemy said. Soon. Let's try. Kaka said we don't understand. That's oh. what he told her last night. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Back on with the game. E home versus secret is 13 to 10 at the moment. And CTY, as we're talking about, cleaning up that juicy, juicy, yeah. juicy ancient stuff. And this man's gonna be a rich man. And enemy's gonna be a jealous man because he can't really do that. It has his morphing this game, which is uh. Now proven to be the difference in the net worth, uh, Sven is still ahead by... I mean, and we actually cut it down by a good margin. Before that it was probably around 3,000, the difference, but right now it's 2k gold, so definitely catching up uh, pretty well compared to the Sven here. So let's see what Sven goes for as well, after his dagger. 
he going to go for BK or he's just going to go for more like damage? I think as we, I'd, I'd like to see him go for either the AC or all the, all the moon shards. AC is nice. CTY stuff. AC is really nice with uh, the physical damage from the bot spirit, you know, the necro book as well. Yeah, and the morphing right click. It's going to be great against this. So that's definitely a, a good option for CTY here. And looking at the other heroes, Phoenix so far still hasn't gotten anything else and chances seeing whether he comes. I um, old chicken has fuels and April and it's a spread and part of your So most likely next item you consider on Lina is either the BKB or you wanna get Talents right away. Um, he might want to get BKB so that he doesn't get busted down so easily. Okay. Or so that would be a good consideration for the Lina. Sometimes when you go for Aghanims and you don't have BKB, you can't really use your spells really well in team fights because you get focused on easily. Yeah, I mean, as we saw from that one in the river where he got swapped from Pile of Day, oh, he did get the spells up, but only so just. He actually completed the foot three times and pipe zero times. Okay, so just the hoodie for Lennon. Interesting. Focusing, yeah? She's changing it up. The reasoning is just so that he can actually survive the magic first from Invoker, I guess. I don't want to get one shot at even because like morphing might go for that sort of way. So it, it's it is going to be nice again against DE because as we were saying earlier, Ench being one of the heroes that morph would have like easily burst down and, and having that hood at this point at least. I mean, it's going to make it hard. Interesting to see that the way he thinks here. Yeah. yeah. The game. The smart cookies here on the side of the huh? Now they look to maybe fight here. Warcry's pop. They look to find this tier one secret. In the complimentary fortification, we'll see if Pilot Die wants to go for one of his in. Crazy initiation short. Yes, they do. Ground to CTY. Raw as well, but the Sunray is getting him back up. Bruno coming down for an He's only going to catch Puppy here on the sideline. To keep CTY alive for the time He's trying to move himself out of here, but no, the damage is too much. Secret will find the kill on Sven, and that is Sven on that, but 60 seconds. And this going to be held back by Light Strike Array. They're trying to move forward for more here. And a strike straight onto the void. Kakei's gonna look for the TP here, but he's not gonna make it. Burst it down. Pylite die. Pin that one up with the magic missile. And again, Pi really turning up this yeah. game. That's what. You, you see this time he he, he he didn't repeat the same mistake. He got the half. He got the wave first. Yeah, yeah. He cancelled the blink so CTY couldn't get away. And the Beastmaster Raw was also committed Maybe for that kill. And that was a really good initiation. From Secret, however, the counter initiation from the Faces Void there was not anywhere near as good as Secret's initiation. He needed to catch more heroes to actually save the sand. But because the big cooldown is down right now, Secret are going to abuse the window of opportunity to actually see Aizan right now. And things are not uh, looking good for Eon here. They're going to take probably a lot of power damage and might even lose the tower here. Because push really quickly with the heroes. But Secret once again, like, they decided they don't want to make same mistake they made in the middle lane where they tried to go too far and they lost too many heroes. And the send back. Oh, Puppy! He saved Pike. He won't be able to save himself. Try for a, a cheeky TP in the trees. We're gonna pay off there as they're well on top of that with the light strike. As CTY talking about his build, it isn't gonna be the AC Moon Shards, anything from CTY. Even it's standard this time. Just going for the BKB. Yeah, it's safe. It's many spells that can, you know... Especially with the Morphling's E-Blade now. Yeah. It's like, even though you, you, you talk about, oh, it still goes, Raw still goes through BKB, Swap still goes through BKB, but it's also like the fact that Magic Missile, that's Cold Snap, that's the Meteor. And that's an Invoker. That's the, you know, even the Chen, you know, it's really annoying. Like, Pai has been, I saw him holding on into the Courage Creep, uh, the Satyrs, the last fight. It, it's got a really significant mark recently to the cooldown. It had just a 3 second cooldown on the Courage, so it's really useful. In kiting melee carries like a Sven, so definitely the BKB is gonna help him in that department in team fight. So he's just he's very close to 100 go away from it. So oh. Ehome is gonna wait for that before they. They might try and fight Bomb though. You got 11 starting to jump in. He'll... Oh, he oh, oh, he no. oh no! Oh, 11 overstepped the mark. Oh, it was a replica, and now he himself oh, will pay. He got all to them. Oh, oh, you ready for oh, the leader? Save yourself, son. Get yourself out of here. Will do, but Morphling will turn and take the kill onto Phoenix Dead Envy. You can have a second one there for the yeah. side of Secret. And I hate to point fingers, but they're still off the back of an unfortunate Chronosphere from the Void there, leading the side of Ehome into yeah, that one. That's Roshan for Secret. And that was also the reveal for the Echo Blade. They did not see the Echo Blade at all. So that was the first time 
uh, uh, e-home encounter the animal spirit from Andy, so they have to be very cautious for this. He can actually burst off a Nina from both because Nina actually went for oh he's going for the agony, so he's not okay. going for the BKB. So he's going for the much riskier build, but the damage intensive build. So he might be actually at risk that falling to that combo combination himself from the market. So he needs to be very careful with his positioning. Old chicken. And it seems like Lamb is not gonna finish the fight, like uh Statsman suggested, he's going back for stretch. Casual food of defiance. So this is really interesting <laughs> to see. We now got bot stun on Misery as well, so him and of course uh, we are Zinvoker, who, who's now less than 1k gold away from that Aghanim, so yep. are going to be able to yeah. get themselves across the map and, and start to pull the home apart. They're yeah, looking really good going into the late game, man. Uh, the next yeah. thing I would probably want to see, or like to see from Secret, is getting a gem to secure the map. Because right now, because they are a lot of map control with the Beastmaster Hawk and obviously getting the real chance, so if you want to eliminate the enemy's uh, vision, that would be your uh, next and most important step. So they can't actually leave the base because they have to contain. Yeah, when you're losing, you have to rely on your vision. They actually know where you can farm. But actually, looking at e home's vision, they do not have much vision now. They do not have any observer wards out on the map. It's mostly just sentries. They have observer wards, but they just got removed. Uh, they've got ops on uh, on ladder. In one ward left, huh? It means actually, uh, Seeker was able to actually deward. I didn't pay attention to that. Most of the vision has, despite not having a gem. So I think they did a really good job in that department. They might of course come out with the level 3. Yeah, that's true, right. yeah. And it's all, he's, you know, he's been able to maintain quite good control of the map, mid lane, old 11. Uh, we're going to want to walk into that one in the middle. Going to back off and uh, E-Home now. Playing a lot more reserved. Sticking themselves right up into their own base. You've got bots now on EE, so his farm is going to continue to accelerate. And you can see it already on the network. Yeah, he's, he's going to really catching up. He's going to start to take over the Sven yeah. because they have map control, and Sven is very scared of like. Farm. You look at him; he was like he farmed at top of a couple of waves, and he just backed off because they don't have vision. He's really afraid of actually just going out too far. And right now, it's going to hurt him a lot because he went for the BKB. Like when you go for the BKB, you want to fight Sven. But as of their position right now, they can't really fight because the enemy has Aegis and they have superior map control. BKB is like essentially a kind of not optimized for hero. Because you want to be able to fight when you get a BKB. So that's really unfortunate for him because the game the situation of the game became really bad for them after they lost the last fight and giving away the Roshan. Second Roshan to keep it. I really like this die ward as well, it's really nice in the middle and we saw their misery just coming in on the bottom and straight away they decided secretly saw Eho making a movement all the way towards the Beastmaster, giving that space on the top ground to just come in with a push backed up by Weehan, take the tier 2. Uh, that ward doing quite a lot in, the, in this position of the game where Eho are sticking as a group in their base and moving as yeah. a pack between the lanes. You can can clearly see where the side of so e basically it's also not easy for Secret to push high ground now because Ehome has really good high ground defense with the team fight. But they are doing the other option, which is to suffocate the enemy right now. You can't really leave the base if you're at e home because you don't have vision. And Secret can just use them they have right now to just out farm and just farm, just pulling ahead on their core heroes, just farming and just making sure that e home doesn't leave their base, even despite not getting takeoffs because e home are just constantly hugging each other in the base. I mean, look at Pilo Dai, we've been talking about his swaps. He's picked the Yoga Club, but now starts to stockpile. Do you think he is going for the Aghanim set? Yeah, I think Aghanim is a really good item. Like, even if you are on carry bench, I think it's still a really good item on, on the hero. Because it means that when you die, you're still contributing to the team fight. You are, you are doing physical damage, you are using your spells. It's a really good item on bench overall. It doesn't really matter your support or, uh, or a carry position. And talking about it, doesn't go for it. Saved up and bought the straight up uh, Vladimir's. Uh, just for oh, he changed his mind, I guess. Yeah, just for the pull out Vlads. So that they can actually. Mm, they might actually be deciding to hit a timing and to use Aegis uh, in the next few minutes. So the Vladimir's obviously is going to help them push. Maybe that's the plan for them right now. They want to be able to push. And obviously, Puppy has his axe. Now, so they're going to look to wait for the Ancients to spawn so he can actually get himself uh, on. One of the granite golems that would be the, the best trip for them to go. And with the blads, I guess they're looking at a really, really good timing in the next few minutes before the Aegis expires. 
So that should be Seeker's land right now. Okay, to try and get as much as they can out of Weon. Yeah, uh, oh, they sorry. don't get a Golem here, and uh, oh, these, that's bad. Halada is gonna be the one <laughs> clearing the Ancients because he can as a support. And I'm not sure if they want to wait. If you look at what Puppy Creep's composition are right now, he has a Mookie Aura, he has the Ice Armor, he has, and he has the, obviously the Dragon Aura, so... The last one he wants is definitely still the Granite Aura. More HP. They might still want to wait for it because I think it's... Like it's it's, it's going to be a huge difference waiting for that creep. And are you kind of happier waiting for that, and even if the Aegis expires, you feel they don't really need to, to force anything at this point? Yeah, but the best case scenario is having both. Before, yeah, before the Aegis expires, you make the same with the Aegis plus all the creeps. Because I, I think Secret are keeping a really strong timing window right now. And the Volker also has 3k gold. He hasn't spent, so curious to see what he wants to go for next. He's going to go for a more a spell damage with the offering call, reducing the cooldown, or he wants to go for maybe uh, Shivas, like that. He sells both his items, still, so he's definitely going for the offering call right now. To you know, further improve his spells, and you know, just about his spells right now in the late game. So spend. Hit by, I believe, a uh, morphing combo. <laughs> really left. I'm liking this now. It's, it's starting to step at the point where CTY is going to build the deeps. He's got the Crystalus. 1500, I imagine it will be completing the full out yeah. Daedalus before anything else, mm -hmm. really? Yeah, but the the point still goes back to six heroes that they can actually deal with the spam. They can despite, kind of. Yeah, despite him having a huge amount of damage. So I think that despite the spam getting a lot of uh, damage items, he still has to rely on his team to be able to actually. Heal, uh, heal damage, you need the void to actually hit a good corner Oh, oh fuck, man, Cactus is getting blown up and that was the gem! That was your Phoenix out all alone right. with the gem of True Sight, so Secret are going to be very happy with that one. I guess Cactus is safe because he put that Radiant Ward down, but... Oh yeah, Puppy didn't get didn't a Didn't spot it out. Yeah. So he's not going to be too happy about that. Sucks for him, but uh, I guess they're still gonna push with the timing, are they? No, they're still gonna continue farming. He's still in. Look at him, he's pinging the ancients. He wants to wait for a Granite <laughs> Golem. Don't get lucky, one day, pop. Oh, there's one over here on the Radiant camp, uh, Ancient Camp. Yeah, does anyone want to make the journey over there? I mean, they have total map control, so <laughs> why I, not? That, yeah, someone's gonna end up passing that point. And we'll see if uh, Pile Wee is uh, check it out for Puffin. Give me a DD rune here on the river. Now the wave of terror is spotted out, so they know that the granite golems are there now. So you could have been just con like controlling the game really well, and so they have finally found the granite golem. Uh, Pile Wee got it out. Puffy is going to move over, so see whether they actually finally make their move right now with this granite golem. They have everything they need. Ooh, yeah, they've smoked up and they're heading themselves right towards the ancients. They go around the back. Yep, I because think they are contained in their base, so the only way yeah. they can move out is by smoking out. So, let's see whether they actually get this big kill. If they can actually get themselves on Weeha here. There's the camp. Weeha is hiding oh, in the trees. Ah, oh, they're jumping to the wrong side and Weeha's gonna be fine. Thinks away immediately as soon as some of them reveal themselves in the lane. He is not risking his life for that one. And, yeah, that's uh, a wasted time from E-Home. Yeah, Puppy got his drag on. But at the very least, if you look at the map right now, E-Home managed to get two wards out. So they have some sort of vision, at the very least, to understand where, when and where they can farm. So this is really important for them. Um, so, like you mentioned, Puppy can get his hands on Granite Golem. But he still has a lot of wards that they haven't really planned on, so that, I guess they're going to be waiting for the next Roshan, because it's cheese as well. Take wards on the map, and possibly try to find e -Home's vision and deward it with the gem that they actually got from the Phoenix earlier. Those are the things that Secret are going to be looking to do in the next few minutes. Roshan, um, and get map control, place their wards, and remove the vision of e -Home. And we can see Envy's farm continuing to just fire off it. Um He's got 2.3k now on top of the E Blade Manta Star. Puppy as well was very close to the Guru. He's just got the rest to be gold. If he wishes to finish that off, but uh, yeah, next time for Envy.
you're expired. I'm actually like the Scotty. Scotty. <laughs> to kind of spend even more. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the boat. It's, how did how did Ehan kill Envy? They need to chrono into Lina Sun and into Sen Sun. Like they need all three labels. Yeah. But if he begins to morph, I mean, he's it's yeah, still going to take a lot of time. It's going to be difficult. So maybe the other option is. Uh, maybe you call because you can't really ignore him. He's dealing a lot of damage. You corner him or you stun okay. him and you go for the other team. Uh, or go for the other teammates and you leave the morphing to last. It's like you mentioned, when he puts his morph out, it, I'm not sure whether they have uh, enough damage to actually burst him down. Oh, so and he's gonna be hard as well because they have the swap. So it's not gonna be easy for him to just focus one target and just hopefully bring them down with all the single target focus fire. They might have to just. Un or disable him and go for the teammates. Like the bench and the Chen has to be how many targets of the Sven. I think the Sven needs to find and get the support first. You're saying every time on Levin just trying to hide in the tree line every every position. He's been having a really rough game as well. Though we talk about Weeha not having a good game, but all eleven is also not having a really good game. He gave up a few very big kills that we often in getting the Roshan the two times. And hasn't really been setting up big corners yet. We're getting another easy way to see the speed that they do this is formidable and nothing that Ehome can do in terms of getting there in time. This is this is looking really dangerous for Ehome. If they decide to take this fight and they lose the fight, it might mean they have to expand buybacks or lose their racks. Yeah. So just, I think the best bet is just to defend in high ground and um, you know, because that's the best place. It gives you vision over the enemy and that improves your chances of winning. Right. Yeah, the BKB on Morphling, Octarine now on oh, Weehaw and Boga. Oh, right, uh, it's, uh, so it's gonna be hard. So how are they gonna kill him right now with the BKB? Oh, that's the thing. I, I mean, it is Envy, so I don't want to say he's not gonna die again, but it's gonna be very hard for him to die. But I, I'm not gonna defy Envy to prove me wrong. Uh, it is Envy. But you don't trust him. So, uh, it's Envy, he's gonna do something crazy. But... He, he's looking pretty good, and he's playing very well this game. Okay, net worth on the guy we just saw. Actually, looking at the net worth difference overall, it's about 20,000 advantage for Secret. Yeah. It's, it's just totally gone. Tower, They've been controlling the, the last 10 minutes really, really well with the Beastmaster. They've had full map. Yeah, and Beastmaster uh, needs to be just complete with the AC, so they basically have all the auras they need. AC, Bad, uh, the, the Ancient Black Dragon, the Granite Golem. They have the Necrobook on Beastmaster as well. So basically, they they have everything they need to actually proceed to push the high ground right now. They just have to be very careful not to get caught by the Coronger. They have to be apart, uh, especially the bench not to get caught since then he stopped the carry out. Those sort are of things that they need to pay attention to. Envy is the lone bottom lane. He's three heroes down here, and his teammates are forcing the top lane. Hey, just having the space up here. And the fortification will come out for the side of the Look at the Necro Warrior. Oh my god, it's lucky. Uh, easy racks there on the top of these, the range ones here for the size. Secret and okay. hey home, they need to come up with something because this is just going to continue. Secret slow siege where they just send someone in like Envy onto one lane, pull them yeah, apart. Like I mentioned, they're doing a really good job. They're not committing because the only way they can lose the team fight is they get caught in like too many heroes get caught in the corner sphere and they land a really good egg. So what they're doing right now is just picking them up. Not allowing e home to grow up together to use just the PSP. Oh, behind I die with the SWAT bringing CTY out of the base. Then after half up and after the swipe off the BKB, let's do time. Fight the Chrono for that ball. That's free. CTY himself is in the Chrono. The Summer Age will start taking him up. And e home, this is their chance to try and find a fight. Look at the Storm Ammon from Pilot Died. The Supernova coming out as well. They're bursting now with a few crits. They will find the kill onto the bench. They finally see more though at the same. See, Poppy's like, guys, I'm hitting the racks, boys. And Envy, he's down bottom. He's looking for some racks as well. 11 will start to jump on Puffy. Envy is continuing to push on on the bottom lane of racks. Top lane, we are a misery. They're looking for the melee and they're looking for the fight as well at the same time. By the looks of it, Envy was able to finish off the bottom. Now he goes to the mid lane. He's going to be able to find himself a second set of melee racks. Full sets of racks on the bottom and the mid lane. Only a little bit left on the top of misery. He's going in. Envy says, I'll finish it off. Team. He goes in. They've been Mega Creep. Been Eternal left. They've been Jackie Mouse. And Eheim just called GG. That, that's secret. Pulling apart at Ehome and that, that's got to be a frustrating loss. You trust Jackie Mouse? I trust in Jackie Mouse. He, he can morph my Ling any time. <laughs> what, what, what a that, that, that was a really well executed plan. They knew that the only way to lose the team fight with the Aegis is they give Ehome a really good chrono or a really good like supernova. So what they did was basically just split up. Yeah. So 
there was no chance that Ehome take a direct engagement and they were forced to scatter around to defend all three sides and they couldn't when they're scattering their heroes are just not as good because they need to be together to fight Absolutely. So, a wow. very good plan by Secret there getting mega 